If you're a thinking person today, it's more important than ever to understand Russia, its history, its geopolitics, and its culture. The enormous, ancient, and incredibly complex country is currently living through one of its periods of intense self-identification, in many ways struggling to survive and restructure itself. I'm Daniel Vexler, and I'm here to help you understand Russia better and without bias. Many older Russians and people from the wider former Soviet bloc are nostalgic for communist rule. After the continuous bloodbath that was the first half of the 20th century, after World War II, as the Iron Curtain settled over the life of the country, life in the Soviet Union became peaceful, stable, and relatively prosperous. The borders were secure. Under Leonid Brezhnev, who ruled from 1964 to 1982, the Red Army numbered almost 8 million. It was the largest army in the world. Education, including world-class higher education, was free. In fact, Alexander Onassis, the son and heir of Greek tycoon Aristotle Onassis, went to Moscow for his university degree. Medical care, transportation, and many other things were also free or very cheap. The living standard increased gradually, and though it was nothing compared to the living standard in the free market West, that kind of stability appealed to a lot of people. If you weren't the ambitious and entrepreneurial type, and not bothered by the lack of opportunities for upward mobility, then you were happy because you and your family were taken care of, and your safety and basic needs were guaranteed. You could calmly go about your business and pretty much live your life however you wanted, as long as you didn't break the law and you weren't interfering with the state or its ideology. In fact, there were plenty of advances to be proud of. This inconvenient truth is not generally known in the West, but the Soviet Union led the world in many human rights issues. It introduced the world's first state-regulated eight-hour workday, and was the first country to give women the vote. In fact, the USSR not only sent the first man into space, Yuri Gagarin in 1961, but also the first woman, Valentina Tereshkova, in 1978. By the late 70s, culture and politics in the country had become so stable that this period is known as the stagnation. The same people occupied their political posts for decades on end. Nothing changed, information was highly censored for ideological content. Even the once very sprightly and energetic Brezhnev seemed to be practically decomposing. After Leonid Ilyich Brezhnev's death in 1982, the next two secretary generals followed him into the grave within the next two and a half years. The unfailingly sharp and ironic Russian people jokingly called the early 80s the hearse races. So you can imagine that when the fresh-faced, brazen and democratic Mikhail Gorbachev appeared on the scene in 1985, the country felt as though it was receiving a huge gulp of fresh air. When Gorbachev came to power, there was a joke. Have you heard about the new leader in power? Oh yeah, does he have the people's support? Nah, he walks by himself. Gorbachev immediately started an enormous campaign of sweeping economic, political and social reforms. This was called reconstruction, better known by the Russian word perestroika. In the late 80s, Soviet citizens received long forgotten freedoms. The ability to travel abroad, some freedom of speech and press. Many atrocities of earlier times were admitted to publicly. Co-ops and other forms of open market trade began to come into play. In 1989, the same year he agreed to tear down the Berlin Wall, alternative political parties were legalized in the Soviet Union for the first time since 1918. Gorbachev even eliminated the position of Secretary General of the Communist Party. And he became simply the President of the Soviet Union, the first and last. This made it possible for people from alternative parties to become the country's leaders. These reforms also created a huge wave of instability. The introduction of free market practices and the lifting of state regulation caused goods to be withheld from sale as suppliers held out for higher prices. There was an enormous jump in organized criminal activity and corruption. In the midst of this volatile scene arose the man who would topple the whole Soviet structure and, under the banner of democracy, destroy the country. We will continue next time with the bear-like figure of Boris Yeltsin.